Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning service again. Shall we all stand? And also, we welcome those who are worshipping at home with us. Just one verse from the Bible to reassure and encourage us. Psalms 33, verse 10, uh, 15, uh, 18. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. We need God's protection all the time and even right here. And we really pray that many more will come and join us in our worship here on Sunday. Uh, we encourage those who are at home uh, to come to church and worship with us. So let's begin our worship. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. I was glad when they said unto me, and let's go to the house of the Lord. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. And let's shout for joy to the Almighty Savior. God is spirit. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good and His love will never fail us. His love endures forever. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah. Try your energy. 
never fail us, O Lord. It is we that fail you. Thank you, Lord. For your many words and your many promises. Your word will never go void. You were saying, God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. What a promise, Lord. Thank you, Father. So, Lord, we call upon your name as we worship you. To abide in you, Lord, as you abide in us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father.
Lord, as we come into your presence right now, because you are here with us, and as we have offered our praises to you, Lord, you have heard our prayers, and then as we gather in your name, you will continue to bless us, even as we continue to worship you and continue to listen to your word. So, Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit will hover all over this place. May there be a highway from heaven, open heaven to this place, so that even when the word is being preached, Lord, you will uh, uh, manifest your mighty power, manifest your mighty healing, manifest your great love upon each and every one of us, especially today is about prayer, Lord. So use your servant, Canon Chin, to declare your word with might and power. In all this, as we continue to worship you, may we feel your presence in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship. Let us together say the collect. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us the sons of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you and that Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the word. Today's Bible reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 42, verse 1 to 12. Jeremiah chapter 42, verse 1 to 12. Then all the army's officers, including Johanan, son of Keriah, and Jezaniah, son of Hosea, and all the people from the least to the greatest, approached Jeremiah the prophet and said to him, Please hear our petition and pray to the Lord your God for this entire remnant. For as you now see, though we are once many, now only a few are left. Pray that the Lord your God will tell us where we should go and what we should do. And have, have, I have heard you, replied Jeremiah the prophet. I will certainly pray to the Lord your God as you have requested. I will tell you everything the Lord says and will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not act in the accordance with everything the Lord your God sends you to tell us. Whether it is favorable or unfavorable, we will obey the Lord our God to whom we, to whom we are sending you so that it will go well with us for we will obey the Lord our God. Ten days later, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. So he called together Johanna, son of Keriah, and all the army officers who were with him, and all the people from the least to the greatest. He said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you send me to present your petition says, If you stay in this land, I will build you up and not tear you down. I will plant you and not uproot you. For I have relented concerning the disaster I have inflicted on you. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, whom you now fear. Do not be afraid of him, declares the Lord, for I am with you and will save you and deliver you from his hands. I will show you, I will show you, I will show you compassion so that he will have compassion on you and restore you to your land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let's all stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew chapter 20, beginning from verse 20 until 28. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Matthew chapter 20, verse 20. A mother's request. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down and asked a favor from, of him. What is it you want? he asked. She said, Grant that one of these, 
Two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You do not know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of Christ. Father, we ask our Holy Spirit to give us understanding again as we look at the book of Jeremiah, as we continue the journey and the stories um, that the development of it today, we're going to learn another lessons about prayer. Help us a lot. Help us to draw the lessons from it only through the Holy Spirit as our teacher and guidance so that, Lord, also we pray you strengthen our faith as we put all that we have uh, will listen and see uh, into practice uh, even to our daily life. We commit all this into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. In the ancient world, especially in China, the emperor had somehow given some authority, special authority, special uh, privileges to certain people for them to carry out or even execute something uh, without really asking the permission from the emperor. So some of them, because of this, as they violate all these privileges and even this authority, they can uh, even to execute someone, to kill someone, whether it's by true accusation or force, but then they will execute them for the sake of get rid of their enemy, so-called. Uh. So after they execute them, and then they only then they will report to the emperor, I have killed, I have executed so-and-so. In this, in the Chinese proverb, we call uh, xian zhan hou zhou. Cantonese will xin zhan hou zhou. Mean you kill first, then you report. Today we use that kind of proverb, this Chinese saying lah, for uh, certain things like you arrange or you have it done it, only then you report. Eh? Uh, even for marriage, eh? um, no, you 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 register first, only then you tell your mom, oh I already got married. You know, you, you do something only then you report. Until we find you tie that person's hand, uh, that person has no choice to say yes, simply because you already done so. Right? Now, spiritually, sometimes it happens to us. When we come to the Lord and pray to the Lord, we do this sin zam hao zhao, mean we kill first and then we report to, to God. Mean we, we, will, we, will, we have already made the decision, we plan so well, we plan step one to step two, everything. It's just like, uh, for example, harmless example, but this is what happened in the office. Rabbi already told the staff, if they want to go for, to apply lead, they cannot buy ticket first. You cannot go ahead and buy because of re reasoning, because of Asia. Huh? Very cheap, right? Uh, before they increase the price, it's so cheap. You cannot buy the air ticket and then put all your hotel and make all the arrangements. Only then you come and apply lead. Well, sometimes being you know, full of, not as much as God, of this kind of mercy and grace, I still approve if I look at it, okay lah, eh? After all, that period of time is not so many projects, not so many programs. Uh, you, can, you can go for vacation, but when you hit like, for instance, Christmas, Chinese New Year, Easter, all these big events is coming on, then you go ahead with all this, only then you apply, I will 
reject your application. I mean, not you, the staff application. Sorry, uh, that, you know, what you have to do with me? No, I will, I will seriously. Because I cannot allow them to sin somehow down, you know? You cannot kill and then report to me. I mean you tie my hand and you force me to sign the application form that, yeah, I already buy the ticket, I already put the hotel. How, ah? Uh? How? No, sorry. You got to burn your ticket, you burn your hotel. I mean, not burn the hotel, I mean the, the, the booking. <laughs> not, don't burn, burn all people hotel, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, this kind of thing happened to us when we come to God. True or not? I mean, it happened to me as well. I was awkward. Of course, sometimes I'm still struggle with it, even, even though I have kind of way back, like, like repented about this kind of asking the Lord. We, we bring the whole list. We decide whether one rain or not, whether success or not, whether this project will go ahead or not. We, we just ask God for confirmation. Today, we've got to learn something with this topic. See your inner heart and pray in Jeremiah chapter 42. What happened is that after 38, last week, <laughs> this few chapter between 39 to 42, Jeremiah was silenced. It's what, he was not in the episode. <laughs> what happened is that after the ninth year of Jedekiah, Chapter 39. No, Babylonian had withdrew because uh, they heard Jeremiah got help from Egypt. So they withdrew. But after that, they returned. And this time, they siege and destroy Jerusalem. Okay? So what happened then? Jeremiah, uh, Jedekiah tried to run away, but then he was caught. And then in front of him, his sons were slaughtered. And then uh, Babylonian, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, clutched out his eye and then put on a uh, uh, chain until he died. That was Jedekiah's story. You will read it again in chapter 52, 51. Eh? Eh? It's repeated, the same story again. But 52 will be more details. Then after that, uh, Nebuchadnezzar put Nebuchadnezzar to take charge of the land. So some of the poorest and weakest will stay behind, live behind. So they had to take care of the vineyard and so on. So Nebuchadnezzar uh, and appoint uh, uh, Gedaria. Gedaria to take care of the land. So people who run and because of the first invasion, all these Jewish, they heard about it, they came back. It seemed like a new hope. Uh, there's a lot of people already deported and exiled to Babylon. So these, those who are scattered around the land came back because Gedaria. Gedera can consider as a good governor to taking care of the thing because he do give a lot of freedom. For instance, Jeremiah was under the instruction. Jeremiah was released from the, the courtyard prison, you remember? So now under Nebo Zalatan, he gave him a choice. Whether you want to follow these people to Babylon or you want to stay back, you can choose wherever you go. Jeremiah chose to stay back with the people. Probably you say, Canon, then you say, those who stay back will die. Somehow Jeremiah was given that kind of special treatment. He, he stayed back. Now, come back to that story. Gedaliah had bring everyone come to, come in together. And one of those is Ismail. Sound familiar, right? The name. Yeah. But different surname. Huh? Ismail <laughs> came. Uh, he was the relative of should be King Asa. Somehow he came up with a plot, getting help from the Ammonites to plot for assassination on Gedaliah. Jo Yohanan. Yohanan came and reported to Gedaliah. Hey, uh, this, this Ismail is going to kill you. Say a word, I will go and kill him for you. But Gedaliah said, no, don't do that. Then chapter 40, whereby in the midst of the meal, uh, Gedaliah was assassinated, assassinated by Ishmael. Ishmael bring along with 10 people and killed all of them. Then the second day, the Bible say, 
80 of the Jewish people feel so sad, they sh shave off their beard and then mourn for Gedaliah. So Ismail pretended to be, you know, also sad with them. Hey, let us come and bring offering and uh, settle all these things. But then later on, he killed 80 of them. Only 10 out of the 80 say, don't kill us. We have some food. It's like, you no, know, you can take all the food. Don't kill us. Of course, Ismail didn't kill them, but he killed 70 of them and pound up in the cistern until it filled the cistern. This few chapter is kind of very cruel and very bloody because of all this thing. <laughs> you can imagine the whole thing killing all over the place. Then Ismail tried to run away because he had killed the governor uh, appointed by King Babylon. You know? On the way running to the Ammon, or he wanted to get help from the Ammonite, king of Ammon, Johanan go and kill him and rescue, you know, that 10 Jewish and the others. Because he deported everyone. The Jewish people, he deported everyone. So Johanan go and rescue them. And of course, later on, with Jeremiah as well, he brought them instead of staying in the land of Judah, he also ran away. Because for sure, King Babylon going to send a troop and destroy Jerusalem once and for all. So he brought them all and tried to flee away to where? To Egypt. All right? Probably get help. The previous help. So on the way, chapter 42, Johanan and all the officials, big and small, everyone, come and look for Jeremiah. Then Jeremiah all of a sudden come back to the screen scene again. Eh? They basically ask Jeremiah, pray to your Lord. See this thing whether it's okay or not for us to go to Egypt. That is where this prayer thing come about. No? We've got to learn two things. I'm not saying that you cannot do those, what they call, sin zam hao zhao, as you come to the Lord. can but there is a better way for us to pray to the Lord. If we pray in this better way, obviously we will have a better answer from our God. Amen? All right? Two things that I want to share with you. First one is that uh, our ways of praying, looking at them, they basically, in verse 1, he said, Then all the army of Israel, including Yohanan, son of Kariah, and Jeraniah, Jezaniah, son of Hosiah, and all the people from the least to the greatest approached Jeremiah, the prophet, and said to him, please hear our petition and pray to the Lord your God for this entire remnant. Basically, they don't really trust. We're your God. It's not my God. It's your God. Basically, they want confirmation. For as you see now, though we were once of many, now only a few are left, pray that the Lord your God well, tell us where we should go and what we should do. Do you think that they didn't know where, where they should go and should do? They have a plan for it. They're on the way to Egypt already. It's like you have everything, then you ask the Lord. Basically, it's ask God, can you confirm it? I think many times in our life, we, 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 we have done it so many times. Some of the young people came to me, can I get this job or not? I say, why? It's a job. I mean, it's God blessing. No, because this job, the boss asked me to work on Sunday. I say, you should know. How can a God ask you to work on Sunday and not to worship Him on Sunday? Because Sunday, He wants all of us to come and worship Him. So basically, this young people, He already arranged everything and tell God, can you confirm so that He will have peace, will have the affirmation, to do what he wants to do and go where he wants to go. Today, we, don't, we shouldn't do that because talking about prayer, there's a sovereignty of God. mean, God take control. I will show you some verses here, Bible verses, to pick up something. A lot in the Bible say that we have prayed wrongly or not a wrong prayer, but then in the wrong way. We should have a better way to pray. So these few things I'm picking up uh, is quite related to uh, the Jeremiah chapter 42, the way they ask. 
Okay, first thing. Let us look at Matthew, the gospel reading just now. The mother of Jebedee's sons came to Jesus with her son. In Mark, it actually reported the James and John. But here, the, the mother. The mother came to Jesus, kneeling down, asking a favor of him, in him, of him. What is it you want? Jesus asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and other your left in your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, answer her, You don't know what you are asking. Jesus said to them, Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answer. Seriously? You already decided not to ask whether I can sit or not. He already decided, let my son, one of my sons sit on your right, one of my sons sit on your left. Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking. I think many times in our prayer, I think God will answer us in such a way, you don't know what you're asking. We ask something really which is not God's at all. If we have, kind of know the Bible, know His will, know His heart, know what God's want, basically we were asking something that we don't know. So later on, you'll see how Jesus answered this lady and obviously answered that two sons. So first thing is, sometimes we do not know what we ask for. Whether the thing that we ask is not useful for us, is not necessary for us, or it's just, we are just asking out of nothing. Uh, because of duty, because of routine. Then we ask, like for instance, we have a lot of prayer in the Anglican worship. Do, you, do we really mean what we are praying for every Sunday? The collect of purity, the Gloria, the Nicene Creed, all this prayer. Sometimes when we pray, we just read the prayer. Uh, even the lost prayer. Do we really mean our Father in heaven? Hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do we really mean that? Sometimes if we fall in this mistake that we do not know what we are praying, we are praying in the wrong way. Second, uh, in Isaiah chapter 14, huh, this is about the fallen angel, about Lucifer about Satan himself. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nation, you say in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will arise my throne above the star of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost high of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the top of the cloud. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. The last I is there is the worst. I will make myself like Most High. Even though He's not higher than the Most High, higher than God. But I will make myself like you, God. The first message that I heard from this chapter 14, the pastor say, you know, those who are using iPhone, it kind dangerous. I'm using iPhone then uh, before I switch, switch from Motorola. So I'm like, <laughs> I, no. And then he said, no. You know the center of the word sin. What alphabet is that? I, you know. Uh, of course, I'm still using iPhone. I have no no problem in that because I don't really come to the Lord that I will make myself like you. But that I, that five eyes from Lucifer himself and make him to be the fallen angel. Today, many times, we ask out of our selfish desire. Basically, just I want. When's the last time we really ask what God wants? Instead that I want. I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. When's the last time we really stop and ask God, God, what do you want? What do you want? Third one. James chapter 4. Another problem. When you ask, you do not receive. Because you ask with a wrong motive. That you may spend what you get on your pleasure. Ask with a wrong motive. Even though it sounds like a right prayer, but 
asking with the wrong motive. Wrong motive might not be forever, but wrong motive for that moment. It's like uh, 10 years old or 11 years old or 12 years old or teenager asking for a car. Wrong motive. You can't even, you can't get a car, you can't even drive a car without a license. Only after what, 17 now or 16? Yeah, wrong motive. Or you are, when you are 17 years old, Lord, give me a husband. Uh, can I, can I, I should use 13 years old. Oh, give me a wife. Wrong motive. We're asking something that is not meant for us at that time. So James chapter 4 mentioned to us here, you ask with a wrong motive. You, when you ask like that, you will not receive. It's not that God don't like you. It just is not for you at that time. Asking with the wrong motive and use it and waste it in your own pleasure. The original word is, is like in a party. We ask all these things not to use it for the kingdom of God, but we waste it for some so-called worldly and secular things, not for the kingdom of God. If we ask for the kingdom of God, surely God will bless you. Amen? Eh? Then the fourth one, uh, Psalm 66. Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what He has done for me. I cried out to Him with my mouth. He praised was on my tongue. If I cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld His love from me. Basically, this psalmist had repented from his previous or former way of his life, which he had cherished sin in his heart. I mean, his sin had become so heavy, it like caused the whole thing in his heart. It covered his whole heart with sin. Because of that, God will not listen. If we bring all this to the Lord, God is holy. Uh, the first time I see this, it's not so much like God don't listen. It's, it's like that relationship, it cannot be close because we, we are sinful. That's why we need Jesus Christ even in our prayer. We should ask the Holy Spirit to examine our heart first. Do we come to the Lord because of that sinful nature or we cherish sin in our heart and make us uh, when we talk to the Lord, what greatly influenced because of the sinful nature. You get what I mean? If we are pure, we are holy. Mean we always think about God. When we ask, we will not ask wrongly. But if we cherish with sin, as we was influenced by that sinful thing in us, sometimes we ask things sinfully. Huh? Ever heard? Like leaders pray, they will use prayer to rebuke someone. Sound familiar? You know, Lord, pray, I, I pray for this so and so, no? Lord, that is, we use prayer to criticize that person. Just like we, sometimes we did. Like during those times in election time, uh, I find it very hard to pray in uh, those, what we call, I'm not quite sure, a prayer meeting or campaign. Our prayer meetings sound very opposition. And so I go to, go to this prayer meeting, this, uh, this is look like a campaign. Apart, we do not have food and ang pao only. La. We are asked and are sometimes forced to go because prayer meeting. So, uh, so we went there, sometimes I say, what, 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 what kind of prayer that we are praying? We, we really sound like our opposite without the flag and so on and everything. Oh Lord, eh, take this government down. Oh, take this leader now. Oh Lord, change it, change it. Well, I mean like, hmm, is it God? Really God? Or because we cherish sin in our heart? Because a person who are not sinful, we will pray for love, isn't it? We will pray for grace. We will pray for salvation. We pray that the Lord will rescue this person. Not to, you know, when the things come down, uh, I even heard a prayer meeting become a celebration when so-called that government was brought down. Oh, thank God! It's like a celebration. Huh. Where is that God say, I 
He wants everyone to be saved. No one to be perished. Where are those God's will and God's heart in our prayer? So sometimes I struggle with that kind of prayer meeting. and say, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Uh, I mean, me become, I mean, just, just me. Probably you will not agree with it. But for me, I find it very hard because I do want to see where is God? What do we cherish in our heart? Is it our own desire, our own sin, or just basically go after God's heart? Eh? So here, we look at the second thing. After they pray on their, I mean, according to their ways, now we want to see God's ways of answering. Ten days later, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. So he called together Johanan, sons of Caria, and all the army officers who were with him, and all the people from the list of the greatest. He said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your petition, say. I do a research on this. It's so many of them, so many verses. Every time, regardless what kind of circumstances, what kind of way you're asking, who asking uh, 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 Jeremiah, he will always answer in this way. This is what the Lord Almighty say. So, of course, to cut the story short, chapter 42, you read on until 43. Jeremiah say, yeah, yeah, if you stay and I mean, you, if you obey the Lord, word of the Lord, you'll be safe. If you go down to this land, even to Egypt, you will die with the sword. Let us turn to uh, Jeremiah chapter 43. Uh, chapter 40, 42. Uh, you can see it from chapter 42. Verse 19. If you follow the daily living water, you, you, I think you have come across with this already. Remnant of Judah, the Lord has told you, do not go to Egypt. Be sure of this. I warn you today that you made a fatal, uh, fatal uh, mixed mistake when you sent me to the Lord your God and say, pray to the Lord our God for us. Tell us everything he said, and we will do it. I have told you today, but you still have not obeyed the Lord your God in all he sent me to tell you. So now, be sure of this. You will die by the sword, famine, and plague in a place where you want to go to settle. Then verse 43, uh, chapter 43. When Jeremiah had finished telling the people all the words of the Lord their God, everything the Lord had sent him to tell them, Azariah, son of Hosai, Hosh, Hoshaia and Johanan, son of Kariah, and all the arrogant men say to Jeremiah, You are lying. The Lord our God has not sent you to say, You must not go to Egypt to settle there. But Baruch, son of Neriah, is inciting you against us to hand us over to Babylonian, so they may kill us or carry us to exile to Babylon. So, of course, you see later on, they, instead of asking him, but then they want to do something about uh, Jeremiah. You see? So I'm, I was, I'm, I'm right, I was right to say that they already made the plan. You ask for it, then I tell you this thing, but then you still not obey. And even the accused Jeremiah, you are lying. So what's the point you're asking? Sometimes, as a, not sometimes, last time when I was a child, we, I, I, I did it so many times. As a youngest at home, man zai ma. Uh, I have uh, this privilege to ask, no? so it, I can almost like asking everything. But yeah, there's a thing now. I, I I just want it, but during our time, my time, <laughs> not easy, no? uh, Last time we go to Katai Runjit grocery shop. Now kids go to shopping mall. Last time the the, the best thing that we go is you know Gojia Sa. You still remember that Gojia Sa? Wow, that is the the best so called hypermarket at that time. And it's just market, not supermarket some more. So we always go there because we are not have that kind of opportunity to go there every day. So we go to make my plan. I go to make my plan. So wherever you go, like Sunday or Saturday, once a week or once every two weeks, I'll make sure that, you know, to go to which corner to get what and all. I, I got quite used to go just last time in Tawau in uh, near the, 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 the port, the harbour, the port. 
where now the, the port to, to Indonesia, the immigration there. Last time it was there. So I, I can tell you know, which, you know, to which area. So because I go there, I will make sure I will take my mom to pass through that area. Pretend to die, pretend to die. Mom! <laughs> uh, my mom is easy to be bully. Not my dad. So what happened if my parents brought us out? I will still try. Mom! My dad, most of the time, he will keep quiet. He will just keep quiet. But if my mom say no, how to translate in English? Just chanty. In the shop, at the supermarket. Ah, I don't want it. So my mom was, don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry. He was just, don't cry and beg me. Don't cry, don't cry. Then after some time, when he raised his wife, and will start twist my ear. How to cry? Because you know, I because I know I can get it. But if my dad chose you, if my dad is there, that's all. He will neither say any word. He will just use his hand to tell me. Kiao, say kiao, I do phone you to lah. You cry some more, you stay here. He will just walk away. So I have no chance <laughs> to go. Yeah. Uh, then I discover something when I grow older, uh, which is, with this spiritual lesson coming in, that I know something had to do with this verse. Matthew chapter 20, verse 23. You know that story after that, the cup, my son sit on the right and the left. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right and left is not for me to grant. This place, these places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by who? Say with me together. My father. I discovered something, something that we cannot touch, which is belong to God completely. My dad was quite a rich man at that time. He had a lot of money in his wallet. But some part of the money that I cannot touch. It's not that I want it, then he will buy it for me. Something that belonged to the God, the Father. Even somehow you read this one, you'll be confused. Even Jesus Christ cannot decide on it. He can't even know that when he are coming back, God, only God the Father will know. That's I discover. The sovereignty of God means there's something that only God can own it, not even us. No matter how and how, no, no matter how so-called holy you are, but the certainty it just belongs to God, it's belong to God. Okay? So in our prayer, we shouldn't touch those area. How do you find out? Read more Bible. Read more Bible. Read the Word of God. Find out more about the heart of God. Then you will be able to find out what is those area like this. Jesus mentioned it. These places belong to those whom they have been prepared by my Father. Amen. Okay. So Matthew chapter 13. This is what happened to all these Pharisees, all these people. Jesus said, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing and never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For the people's hearts have become colossal. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their ears and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. It's not the end of the world. It's just a matter for us to change a little bit of the way that we talk to God, pray to God. When we can do that with understanding, knowing what and what the do's and the don'ts, then you'll be able to see you can have the key to unlock the heaven, to unlock what is God, what God has prepared for us. 
when you be able to unlock that, you see the blessing will fall and pour out to fall down to us. For this thing, sometimes happen. You see, we we might come in the emotion like you no know, complaining. Why is this happening? What's happened with this one and a half year? Why this COVID nineteen? Why does it come to us? But instead of chanty and dwell with those when we cannot get it, why not we spend some time and try to understand why is that God the Father do not really grant us what we want and change the way of praying, change our perspective, come to the Lord with different way of approaching Him, then you will see, obviously, you approach Him in the right way, we'll be able to receive what He had prepared for us. Amen. So Luke chapter 16, verse 14 to verse 15, the Pharisees, those who us, after hearing Jesus' teaching, the Pharisees who loved money, heard all this and was kneeling of, uh, at Jesus, He said to them, you are the ones who justify yourself in the eyes of men. But God knows your heart. What is highly valued among men is detestable in God's sight. God knows our heart. Do not come to the Lord, pretend that we, like, no, God don't know, no, the way we ask or what. God don't. Come back to that story, Gedaliah, no, uh, Johanan, and the rest, especially they just want to ask God, to confirm that action. Don't do that, my brother and sister. Jesus says, seek him, the king, seek ye the kingdom of heaven and God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Don't prepare a list, don't come up everything, make everything, only then we ask God, can or not. We should ask him from the beginning, ask for his guidance, ask for his advice, then like Hakka say, you will not need to walk for so many Yen Wong Lu. Yeah? Because if we walk for so many those of Yen Wong Lu, uh, end up we complain. Uh. This group of people go to Egypt, you, do you not think that they walk those Yen Wong Lu? Just obey God and follow His instruction, go to Babylon, then they are safe. But at the end of them, all of them die because they choose what they have decided. Even though they ask for God, hopefully God will affirm their action. No. Change the way of praying. Ask the Holy Spirit to seek the inner heart of us. That's why we pray. We ask the Holy Spirit to guide us as we pray. That He will show us the way as we talk to God and also show God's heart to us what we should and ought to pray for. Amen? When you do that, obviously, you are holding a key to unlock the kingdom of heaven. And all His blessing will come and fall on you. Amen? Let's pray. Let us come to the Lord at this time and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us to examine and even search deep inside our heart. Are we not sometimes praying in the wrong way? Way that is not God's. Let us begin to ask the Holy Spirit to examine if that is the case. Let us come to the Lord and confess and ask for the Lord's forgiveness and abandon this heart so that we can turn from our own ways of praying to pray according to God's way.
As the Holy Spirit examines and also starting to guide us to a ways that is according to God as we pray, I want to encourage you at this time, start talking to God. Maybe you have been talking to God and pray to God for certain things, but don't you know, after today, you see, oh, well, okay, I have uh, prayed uh, according to a wrong way, not God's way. But now you know, as the Holy Spirit has taught you. May I encourage you at this time to start that prayer again. Probably because of you don't receive the answer, you have given up. You have given up on that issue or that questions of finding answer from the Lord. But now you know you have a better way to talk to God. May I encourage you at this time at where you are seated or even at home online, start praying to God. You can pray in understanding or pray in tongue. Just talk to God. Huh? Then begin to stop to God. Shaka ba shiki de la ba shaka ba shiki de. Shanta de la ba 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 ka ba shaka ba shiki de. Shanta ha da ya ba 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 ka ba shaka ba shiki de. Shoto hui ya ba 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 ka ba ka ba shaka ba shiki de la ba shanta de la ba shaka ba shiki de. Hallelujah. a picture of a person it might be you that you are trying so hard to climb a wall a high wall you are trying so many ways even up to the time whereby you refuse to give up you're just trying but no, God want to show you actually just beside the wall there's a door for you just open it you can go through that wall and God show me these numbers that you have trying to climb that wall that things in your life for five years if that the person you are the person you know you are facing that wall for five years God want to take it away from you today by showing you that actually just next to the wall there's a door for you stop climbing stop believing to yourself but to believe in God God is going to let you to walk through that door today that five years of difficulty is going to end today trust and obey the word of God you will experience something where you have never experienced before that five years of burden that you carry for so far, so long, is going to end today. You're going to trust the Lord and walk through that door. The blessing of the Lord will come upon you. Receive my faith. Receive my faith. Receive my faith. You know God 
through His Holy Spirit working in you right now, you sense something in you, in your heart, in your inner, inner man. You know, God is working mightily in you right now. Receive. Receive. Father, I want to give you thanks for the Word of God today. One more important lesson that we learned. Help us, O oh Lord, to change the way for us to, as we talk, as we pray, even send our petition to you, O oh Lord. Help us to understand there are places, there are areas that is only belong to God. Help us to surrender and submit to you, O oh Lord. Help us to have faith, to obey all the answer that the Lord you have prepared for us. Father, we commit ourselves into your hand. Help us, O oh Lord, so that as we pray according to your way, we know definitely we can unlock the kingdom of heaven, the door to the heaven that the Lord you will pour down your blessing to us, O oh Lord. Father, we commit all this into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's all stand that our God is alive and living today and is among us and that God will hear your prayer, especially what Canon has prophesied that uh, any one of you who is struggling, the Lord is there for you to give you an open door. Let's declare by saying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 Please be seated, brother and sister. Can want to welcome all of you, especially those of uh, just the first time after we reopen the church, uh, joining us back here on site and worship the Lord together. Want to send a warm, warm, warm welcome to you. Also, those who are online, uh, truly, this is the time that we should encourage one another uh, to go back here, I mean, come back to the church to worship together. Amen. All right. Now, let me highlight to you some of the announcements from the bulletin. First of all, um, uh, continue to push and also mobilize either yourself, uh, your group member, or others as you want to subscribe for the daily living water. Because next week will be the closing date. As you look at the bulletin, we also, uh, no, here, we have put down the list uh, of the book that we're going to look at for the next, I mean, 12 months next year in 2022. Right? As I mentioned to you, I had calculated it only 30 cents per day. As we can kind of grow ourselves spiritually and look at the Word of God and study the Word of God together, listen of the Word of God on Sunday, following the same syllabus, and I strongly encourage you to subscribe this book, The Daily Living Water, so that we can go together and follow the same direction as we talk and also preach and share uh, the Word of God, both on Sunday, our personal daily devotion, and also in the DT group as well. Okay? So please do so uh, before 7 of November um, that you can subscribe here in the counter of our night transfer or just call the office, let us know that we will put together 
and then we will do the subscription together. They will send the book just like us today, uh, what some of you are receiving today. They will send it to the church, and then we will distribute it to you. Amen? Because I mentioned last, next year, they're not going to be have any soft copy. Uh, because now we're going uh, for this recovery stage, uh, no more like those time MCO restrictions of movement and so on. Now no more. So they have stopped that soft copy. No more. Okay? So uh, this is why if you want to continue to do this or you want to have a new subscription, please do so. This is highly recommended to all of us to have uh, 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 this book, The Daily Living Water. Amen? Now, um, as for the Christmas, um, last week we have started the Christmas tree project and we have received some of the money already. So may I encourage you to do so because the light up, uh, which you can see only two right now, it's a very rough one. This is much better than last week, but it's going to be like that. But uh, it's a very tidy and uh, how we will plant it from the other side uh, all the way from the back to uh, the front to the back. And 90 trees of them, uh, we're going to light up the whole place. Okay? So if you want to do so, please, uh, you're not limited to one. You can do 10. But you say, how about you? You want to share? Can. Also can. All right? So everyone get involved uh, for us to really bring this spirit of Christmas back to our community. Amen? So uh, in conjunction with that, um, the caroling, please continue to move and push, mobilize in your own TD group and, um, and register if you want to get together with other group and so on, uh, so that we will try to get as many as we can uh, to go out, even though right now we do not have a clear SOP yet. But we plan ahead. We plan ahead. And we plan ahead. Uh, so that at the end, if we cannot, then we will always have another plan. But we need to practice first. We need to do all this uh, 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 rehearsal uh, uh, together with uh, the group member. If you want to use the church for practice, that after Sunday in the afternoon, please let us know. There is always venue available for you. To get your group together, same thing. You do the scan, scanning of the Mysore Chatra, the all the SOP. Eh? Of course, later on, we will disinfect the whole place. Don't worry. Eh? We'll make sure we also uh, observe that social distancing and so on. You want to use a church, please do so. Just make anything which is available and uh, come up with all this practice and so on as we prepare for the caroling. Amen? Now, uh, for Christmas also, we will have baptism service. Those who are ready and prepare, and uh, you're, um, you are kind of eligible for baptism, please submit your form, uh, application form, by 5th of December. Uh, 5th of December. On the 25th, which is the Christmas day itself, we will have baptism in the church. Amen? Now, um, for the diocese, there are a few events that we can take part uh, firstly, of course, the Spark, the youth conference uh, called Without End. Today will be the last day for you to register. So far, just now, I heard from Pastor Grace, Kusem is the highest registration. Uh, throughout the diocese, I was so glad. Eh? So we still can uh, register some more. It's still open. But I want to encourage those of us on Thursday night um, and, thing, and Friday night, two nights, they will open which they do live stream on the Facebook. So get the link and I look into it, then you'll be able to join. And then I also pray for the youth eh, as we continue to support this uh, new generation. So to pray, the, pray that God will transform them. Let spark without end. Ma. Let them spark the fire. Eh, just uh, burn around people spiritually. La. Eh, stir the whole community starting from our own youth. Amen? Right? Now, uh, another thing is for the ADI, eight graduation service. I heard there's, a, I think, 58 uh, going to be graduated. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, so we can join the graduation service. Look at the bulletin. Look at the link on Zoom. You'll be online. That uh, you can go and support and also look at what uh, the ADI is doing at this moment. Just like me, tonight and tomorrow night, I will finish my... Uh, teaching class uh, under the ATI. 
So many of us are involved. We are training and also preparing uh, pastor and clergy, future pastor and clergy for our diocese. All right? So you can log in there and uh, support them. As for our church, that uh, yeah, not to forget to tell you, our prayer meeting right now is just once a month. So next Tuesday, we'll come back to our online prayer meeting. Please log in. Uh, we're going to meet each other and pray together. Amen? All right? Now, there's a long list there. You look at the bulletin. The transfer list. Both the clergy, pastor, evangelist transfer. Uh, yeah, I will, I'll, I'll still be around. Yeah. At least for another year. I, I don't know. Eh? But uh, so far, the, my name is not in the list. Okay? My name is not in the list. But look at the list. Pray for them. You look at the movement, some of the reverend and clergy. Uh, there's going to be a big movement. And pray for Archbishop as well. Uh, He's going to be the acting Archdeacon uh, in Dolbit. Archdeacon Lilith is going to be transferred to Sanakan, St. Michael. So Archbishop himself is going to travel to Dolbit at least three to four times a week. Pray for him. Eh? Pray for him so that God will sustain him uh, physically uh, as he go in and mentor and train out more leaders to take care of the work uh, in, the, in the interior. Amen? So let's pray. Let's come to God for a time of intercession, either you sit or kneel. Let's come to the Lord, especially when we heard about prayers, that our God is a God answering prayer. First of all, let us give thanks and praise God for His promise that He doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Even at this time, you can think of family members, friends, neighbors who have not <clears throat> come to know Him. Pray that you keep this promise that God will use you to reach out to those people around you and your loved ones. For the church, we pray that we can share the good news. That's what I've already sh shared just now, that we continue to ask the Lord to have that, op that we can share the good news and we pray that those who hear will repent and receive eternal life. We also want to give thanks for the home communion <clears throat> every month that through this, our members who cannot come to church will be encouraged and connected to the church. We just pray for them and especially the family members as we go around each month to give them the Holy Communion. Then we pray for the Christmas and also the Christmas decoration. We pray that God will give us that generous heart and support so that all these Christmas trees can be uh, done and that it will cause uh, such a uh, decorative and uh, atmosphere of Christmas for our church that many more can come and celebrate. We give thanks. For the diocese, we thank God for the ATI graduation ceremony uh, on the 9th of November. We pray for all the preparations that those who are doing this, preparing this, Father, you give them the wisdom and also the know-how so that this virtual event will not be in any way uh, disconnected. We pray that the good connection, we praise and give thanks for those who are graduating, especially in our own diocese, and that God will use them for our diocese and for the extension of God's kingdom here on earth. We remember our nation. We pray for the state election in Malacca uh, next month. We know that whatever happened there also affects the whole nation and maybe the coming uh, GE15 next year. So, Father, we do ask that you protect those uh, going for election uh, during that time. We pray against any COVID infection to rise. And we pray for those who are doing all this preparation so that uh, to maintain the safety measures for those who are going to vote. So we pray upon uh, this stat that it will be provided because that stat will also uh, uh, show and reflect 
what is to come for next year general election. So Father, we ask that you continue to guide all those people who are going for uh, voting and those who are for uh, uh, being uh, uh, to, to compete for the, the state government there, that your will be, will be done there, Lord. Lastly, we remember our own state. We pray for our own school children as they prepare to go back to school uh, next month. We pray that you remove any fear in the children and in their parents especially. We pray for all the schools to know how to maintain good uh, all these uh, safety measures so that all the children who come to study a lot will don't feel in any way fearful, but to enjoy their studies, Lord. So we pray that whatever happens, Lord, you are in control. So Father, we give thanks that you have heard our prayers because we ask it in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son, accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask, us in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other greater, uh, no other commandment greater than this. Together, Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us and write these laws into our hearts. We beseech you. Now we come to a time of confession before we receive the Holy Communion. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve in keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men together. Merciful God, our Heavenly Father, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We repent and are truly sorry for our sins. For the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you, and deliver you from all sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you for his service by the power of the Holy Spirit and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Okay. I invite you all to stand. Now that we have been put right with God through faith in Jesus Christ, we have peace with God, so we must make peace with one another in the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet each other with the peace of the Lord. Peace be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is not only right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And now we give you thanks because you have revealed your glory as the glory of your Son and of, and of the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sings this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. The all glory to you, our heavenly Father, for your tender mercy, you give you only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offerings once for all, is one sacrifice of himself. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory for his precious death until he comes again. Whereas, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive these gifts of bread and wine, according to your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution and remembrance of his death and suffering, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my bo body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together we proclaim, Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Blessed are those who are invited to the feast of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and give glory to God. The gifts of God, the gifts of God for the people of God, draw near with faith and humbly receive this bread and wine. And remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom not come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving together. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have fed us with spiritual food and sacrament of his body and blood. Since are now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with goodness and singleness of heart. Amen. I invite you all to stand to receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of the God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.
Service is over, and after quiet meditation, you may leave. Have a blessed and fruitful week. See you next week. And those at home, we encourage them to come and join us. (laughs) 